Sea of Red, it's time for another Fireside Chat, the official podcast of Flames fans. It's go time. I'm Dan alongside Matt, and we're back as always to talk Calgary Flames hockey. And I've noticed one thing this week, the Calgary Flames and the Calgary weather have a lot in common. They're both highly inconsistent. You never know what you're going to get from day to day. Wait five minutes, and it's a completely different team. 20 minutes later, you could be on top of the game. Yep. Um, well, Matt, let's jump into these games. We had three games this week. The first game since we talked last was the San Jose Sharks in the Saddle Dome taking on the Flames. And Johnny Goudreau opened the scoring in the second, but didn't do much good as the Flames fell 3-1 to one to the Sharks. What were your thoughts on this game? I thought the Flames came out rather listless in this contest. And like even though they got the early lead in the second period, they just didn't have any pushback at all and it was just a very slow plotting game like it like the flames did not seem to have very much energy throughout this game and especially after being beaten the way they were what three days earlier by edmonton i was expecting more jump from these guys yeah like it was bad enough that they got spanked by the oilers but then for them to just be like, you would expect this team to have a pulse in this contest. And, like, yeah, they did win the face-off battle and they had a few more hits than the Sharks, but, like, there just didn't seem to be a huge amount of intensity throughout this game by the Flames. And it was just more like they were going through the motions. You know, I give you that, that they were probably looked like they were going through the motions. I thought, though, they played well in the first. I thought they didn't make the most of their chances. Um, and I would say that the Flames were probably, I would say, controlling the play for the majority of the game. I thought it wasn't a great game. It wasn't them controlling it the way they'd want to. But I thought that they were definitely, I would say, on the controlling side. Um, one thing I, I was happy to see, though, Lucic finally fought a game too late. But... Lucic finally got his fight in. Yep. Well, he needed to show that he was there at least. And, yeah, it's... And I think the uh, big news here was that the captain went out midway through the second hurt. And at the time, I thought, if he's out for a while, we should just wave that red flag. Yeah. Or white well, flag, I guess. Especially in the third period. Like, the Flames when they they're trying to come back like it took them a long time for them to get a actual shot on net and you know like losing the captain you'd think that the team would step up to you know like win one for geo type of thing and you know like put more of an effort back at it and yeah not not so much and um congratulations to joe thornton for getting his 1500th career point in the contest i think that's pretty cool yeah it just it was not the game i was expecting after that edmonton game and i think it just looked like another i hate to say it but sort of the story of the season another mediocre effort by the flames they were there maybe they were controlling the game depending on how you look at it but this was not the team that we saw last year and playing a team that's looking as bad as the sharks you should be able to get more than one goal yeah well and that's like what we were saying last week like the next eight games including the three this week were all against deadbeats and like none of these teams have with the exception of vancouver none of them are in the playoffs and like they're all terrible hockey teams so the flames should under normal circumstances come out and dominate these guys but it seems that, like, throughout this season, it's like they get a little bit of an attitude of, like, oh, well, these guys are right near the bottom of the standings, so we don't actually need to come out and play to get the two points, and then they lose. And, like, it's been consistent throughout this season. Like, last month, losing to Mon Montreal and Ottawa, it's like, why are you wasting points on really bad teams? And with both the San Jose game and then the Nashville game, which we'll be talking about in a minute, very much the same thing, where, like, these teams are very beatable. And, like, if the Flames actually came out and played just okay hockey against the deadbeats of the league, like, I, I think the Flames would be right up with St. Louis right now. But The inconsistency the, the, is what's killing them. 
We know they yeah. can do it, and we'll talk about that when we get to the Vancouver game. But for some reason, they can't do it night in and night out. Yeah, it's like they're just tripping themselves up more than anything. Like it, It's not like, talent-wise, the team that was last season and the team that is this season, it's the same group. Like the, the they didn't just magically forget how to play hockey. It's just that they haven't, for whatever reason, been able to put any consistent efforts against really the weak teams more than anything. Like when the, they're playing against good teams, they actually come out and they actually give it a good try. They don't always win those games, but usually the Flames' best efforts this season have been against the better teams. And we saw that in the Vancouver game. They're one of the better teams in the West this season. And the Flames just ripped the doors off on that one. But Before we lose... get to that one, let's cover this uh, Predators game, shall we? Yeah. It's just a weird quirk with this team this season. The Calgary Flames were again at home. They had uh, Cam Talbot in net for this one, and the Calgary Flames fell 3-2 to two to the Predators. Uh, Dante Fabro, Kyle Turris, and Mikael Granlin scored against us. Flames goals his fifth this season from Bennett and fourth this season from Anderson. And like you said, these guys just, they didn't look like they wanted to play. They looked tired. They looked lackadaisical. Like, if you look at this team, this, this one and the San Jose teams, I don't think it looks like teams a team that should be going to the playoffs. No, like frankly, like in these two games, to me, it looked like uh, like a, I'm gonna go way, way back in the early part of when we were doing this show, back towards the end of the 13-14 season, when you know guys like Kenny Augustino and Ben Hanowski were on the team, and like it you know in the last like 15 games of the season where it really didn't matter at all or 2012 2013 whatever but you know like when we were really bad and in the rebuild phase like and like it, our you know we lost and you know well i guess so and so scored yay well like it was the same level of like the game seemed to be completely irrelevant to the flames and like they're just there to finish out the strength and go for garbage bag day and get out for the season for the off season and like there just didn't seem like i'm going to make one exception sam bennett played a really good game and i thought he was excellent throughout the contest but you know everybody else just it's like come on guys wake up and Nope, nothing. Well, I think that's the, I think that's the hard thing is that, you know, these guys are some of them are looking good. You know, we're seeing Kachuk looking good. We're seeing Lindholm looking good. We're, you know, sometimes we're seeing other guys, but we just don't have the entire team. And you can't do this with one or two guys looking good and the rest not looking great. Yeah. It's got to be everyone. Mm Hmm. So, oh, I know. Well, let's let's move ahead to this Vancouver game then. Calgary starts a road trip. They have a long road trip here. Uh, they've got what? How many games on the road? One, two, three, four games on the road. And they started in Vancouver against a team that's looked surprisingly good this year. And the Flames were able to end their losing streak of three games to beat the Canucks 6-2. to two. And Matt, you said it earlier. This is the game where the Flames showed what they can do. Like this yeah. is this looks like the team that we saw last year at its best. Yeah, and like they just ripped the doors off on this one. They completely thumped Vancouver all throughout the contest. They singled out Elias Patterson and hit him consistently. And like it's like where have this has this team been all season? Like this is what we're expecting from this team, and yet it just hasn't materialized and that's been the frustrating part is because they have it it's just where are you guys and and i think in the two games before this it was hard to find a flame that looked good and in this one i think it was the opposite it was hard to find a flame that didn't look good i thought the entire roster looked good in this one and that's why they were able to win by such a commanding lead yeah and it, it like, if the Flames played like this all season, or even, like, two-thirds of the season, they're right up with St. Louis. 
And it's not like St. Louis is particularly awesome. They only have 11 more points than the Flames. Uh, you know, like, if the Flames just played against the Deadbeats as good as, you know, what they played against Vancouver, you're talking about, you know, more than 10 points right there. And it's just frustrating. Because, like, this team should be better than this. And yet we... they're continually having the same problems we saw the flames reunite their top line from last year in this game we had Goudreau, Monaghan and Lindholm playing together again we obviously don't have the full 3M line anymore because Froelich is gone but we had Backlund, Kachuk and Mangiapane so I guess you could do Michael, Matthew and Manji so I guess you could do 3M there Um, Lucic, Ryan Dubé is the third line and Bennett Jankowski, Reader is the fourth line and you know I'm I I know that they're trying to break that line up, but from what we saw in this game, maybe it's time to just stop monkeying with the lines and keep that top line yeah. together. Yeah, well, you know, it, until the Flames are able to acquire a, another top six forward, I think you pretty much have to try and get Gaudreau's line going more than anything, and... It, yeah. You know, like I mean, they want to play Lindholm at center, but... You know, there's something yeah. to be said that last year Goudreau, Monaghan, Lindholm looked great together, and maybe that's what we got to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, and you've talked a lot about the need for a top line uh, or a top six player, and I think when you look at that second line, Backlund, Kachuk, Mangiapane, one yeah. of these things is not like the other. There's no way Mangiapane's yeah. a top six forward on a playoff team. No, and like that's where like the Flames. You know, and it is unfortunate that, like, that Kadri deal or the Zucker deal did not happen last year, but, it, you know, it's... Zucker just got it, moved today. Would you want to pay the price that the Penguins no, played for him? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> yeah, first Galchenyuk and Addison, who's not a bad defensive prospect. Way and, too much for Zucker. Yeah. By the way, uh, just a point of note: the Flames are eight, nine, and two thus far this season against just the Western Conference loser teams. Interesting. So you know, and that like obviously doesn't count that Montreal and Ottawa game as well. So you know, a late eight and eleven against just the Western Conference teams that are outside of a playoff spot. So not good news for this road trip, Matt. No, and like that's where, like. You know, even if you make that, you know, say it like 12 and uh, whatever, um, 12 wins instead of 8, it, you know, you're right up there with St. Louis. And that's just against teams that are just terrible in our conference. So, and like that's not without, you know, having to beat any of the better teams, like keep everything else the same. It's just against the bad ones. And, like, that would be literally your difference. And that's what why this team has been so frustrating lately, because, like, they really should just be walking all over these guys, and yet, no. So this uh, game snaps a three-game losing streak and the first time since December 27th that the Flames won by more than one goal. And I think we're both hoping that after this one, the Flames are going to keep this momentum going hopefully keep the same lines where they can and uh at least on the forward side we'll talk about the defenseman in a little bit and hopefully keep this going through the road trip because if they can play like this they've definitely got a shot at the postseason i don't know how far they'll go but they've definitely got a shot at the postseason well and that's what why like my frustrations with losing to the poor teams is so evident uh, because of the fact that if you look at the flames division despite everything basically going wrong for the Calgary Flames to date in this season through 56 games they're three points out of first in the division that's it three points like big deal Uh, you know and uh, like we could have that easily made up by the time of our next show if the Flames actually decide to go on a winning streak and like the Flames could easily still win the division you know yet on the other side of the coin, they can also be in 12th because uh, they're only four points up on 12th. So, you know, like, it, like that's where, like, this team's frustrating because of the fact that, like, they, if they can just go out and 
play their game their way, it's not like they're out of it by any wild stretch of the imagination. They just have to actually show up in the last 26 games. Right now we sit second wild card in the West at 62 points. Right below us is Arizona at 61. Right above us is Winnipeg at 63. Vegas is third place at 64, tied with Edmonton for 64. So, in Vancouver only 65. Like, we're still right in the thick of things. And theoretically, yeah, like if the Flames with a win the tonight, the Flames are in, are in third place. Yeah. And right there with Edmund, tied with Edmonton, one point behind Vancouver. I say like, theoretically because it depends everybody else does. But Oh, true. But, you know, it is what it is. But still, this team, like, despite everything being so wrong and, like, everybody being so down on this team, three points. You know, and with how the playoffs are set up, on top of it, the, the Flames could get a fortunate matchup if they win the division, getting a wild one of the weaker wild card teams, and you know you could end up having a trip to the conference finals. Like that's how weird this season is. That despite everything going wrong to date, and like the first line not being good, and where are all the depth parts? If they actually just play reasonably good hockey for the last like two months. You know, they could book a ticket possibly all the way to the conference finals. Like, that's how weird this season is. <laughs> well, looking at uh, the season sort of like a playoff round, if we break it down to seven games, and this math I'll give credit to friend of the show Ryan Pike over at Flames Nation. He's broken it down, and it's kind of interesting to look at it when we break it down into seven-game stretches. If you look at the first seven games, the Flames went 3-3-1, three, three, and one, so... I guess if that's a playoff series, you got to say they lost that one, right? Because of the the one yeah. at the end. Second yeah. second set again three three and one, so we've lost two so far. Third set was four two and one, so we won that one. Fourth set was two four and one, so we're what three losses and one win now. Yeah. Um, fifth set was six one and zero. Oh. That was a good set for the team. Sixth set was two four and one. Seventh set was six one and zero, oh. and the eighth set was two four and one so we've lost five and won three of them i mean it shows that again we can do this when we're looking good we can you know like the fifth set where we went six one and oh that's a heck of a a stretch yeah and again, and same in the with seventh the seventh set. set yeah this team like for the first couple months which was basically the bill peters era for the first four sets was pretty much consistently average like three three and one three three and one and then the next two break down to six six and two i think these guys stopped playing for bill and even though there's a new coach i don't want to say lazy is the word but i just don't think that their work ethic has picked up the way it should have no and then it's like oh well we have a new coach so we're gonna play well and then oh we struggled a bit oh well we have to pick it up again and then oh we're struggling again like it, this team uh, it's that's why the season's been so weird and so frustrating and like if they can just keep what they did against Vancouver where everybody was just participating and you know goals will happen if everybody's engaged it, you know like we saw Lucic and Dubé take over the game and like last year we were getting games where Jankowski was taking over a game or uh the 3M line or you know some different group each game was contributing and if we can get start getting some performances from down in the lineup the Flames cuz everybody in the NHL really this season outside of like the top four teams in the East and St. Louis, everybody kind of sucks this season. Like there's not really, it's basically those five teams that are running away with it. And everybody else is just kind of in that whole mediocre zone. And I think if the flames can avoid St. Louis, Colorado, I think really those are the only two of you can avoid St. Louis and Colorado if they can make it to the dance, I think they've got a chance to make it to the second. I didn't think I'd be saying that after the last couple of weeks, but Vancouver, Edmonton, Vegas, Dallas, we can beat them all. Well, and that's the thing. Like, even if you, Vancouver, Edmonton, At least over Vegas, a seven-game series. Winnipeg, Arizona, Nashville, Minnesota, Chicago, 
like all of those teams like if the flames play their game their way they can they should be able to beat any one of those teams yeah i'm, I'm when, not confident in saying there's gonna be a sweep by any means but give us no, seven games not, we can beat any of them i think yeah if they show up and try like colorado and st louis those would be the obviously the tough series but you know ideally if things went a-okay you wouldn't have to face them until the conference finals so you know like the the flames like this is just a very bizarre season and like if they can turn it on for the last two months they can go far like you know and i'm not going that far you know no and the thing is is that they have it in them it's just they have to actually want it and that's the like when the coach called them out after the nashville game they showed up because they were pissed off because you know they got called out by the coach because they were playing bad and like if they can just harness that ain't you know angst and anger and all that and take it out on the opposition they could do something it's just you know that that's been the problem this entire season is which team are you getting on any given night any given period like you just don't know and it's but does that inconsistency i mean the fact it's happened this long not tell you that this, these guys probably can't go on a long run oh i you know i would absolutely be shocked frankly unless they literally went on you know on a murder spree in the last two months where like of the last 26 games they win like 18 of them then sure yeah they could actually be good in the playoffs but you know odds of that happening i don't see <laughs> but well, speaking of odds just before you go too far if you look at moneypuck.com do you use money puck at all matt no neat site it's uh it's not like a betting site it sounds like it it's actually quite good odds and they i love to watch the odds during the game they change them based on every goal scored it's quite intuitive stats done by rob bowman and his team take a look uh go to the about us page if you want to learn more about them but they're saying right now calgary has a 56.4 percent chance of making the playoffs uh 30 3.7 chance of making the second round 16.3 percent chance of making the third round if Calgary wins tonight in regulation, that jumps from 65% to 71.99% chance of making the dance. And if they lose in regulation, 58.06%, which tells you just how close all these teams are. Yeah, basically everybody's kind of in that mediocre zone. <laughs> like uh, th This has been, uh, honestly, the, the single most bizarre season I think I've ever watched of the NHL, where... Like, you only have, like, four or five teams that are at, at all any good, and, like, everybody else is just in that limbo zone of... Like, even if San Jose went on a run and got on their horse, they could actually make the dance. Like, that's how weird and bizarre things are, and... For once, I think the final four games of the season are going to mean something. We play Vancouver, Winnipeg... Vegas and Edmonton, and I think you really could see somebody's standings change right there. Yeah. Well, it's not like last season where it was just basically us versus San Jose and who would win. And, like, Vegas was the distant third place team, and, you know, like, it, it, then everybody else. And, like, now it's kind of like a jump ball. Like, any one of the seven teams in our division, LA is way the, too far gone. But any of the other uh, seven could make it. And, like, that, you know, at this point, like, that's really weird. And, you know, like, that's just not normal. And hopefully, you know, the Flames have the strongest team overall in terms of talent. But, you know, it's the whole effort level that's been the Flames' Realistically. problem. Realistically... I mean, anything can happen, but realistically, how far does this team go this year if they make the playoffs? <sighs> Frankly, I think they can make it out of the first. I don't think they make it out of the second. It depends on... Like, that's... This normally wouldn't be a 
tough question to answer because normally it'd be just going talent versus talent. Who's got the better talented team? That's the one that usually wins. Well, the, I ask you because you're the guy I think who's predicted a Stanley Cup for the last five years. Well, no, I, you know, it's what you know. The Flames have been trying, you know, building towards that. But you know, like frankly, this team, if they're playing their game and actually putting the effort in, there is not a team in the Western Conference that can beat them. Even but what right makes now, makes you believe they'll do that. That's the problem. And I don't understand what the problem is with this team to get them motivated to do what they're supposed to do. And because the talent's there, like Gaudreau didn't just magically forget how what end of the stick is up and can't play hockey. Like he's the same player. It's just for whatever reason, him and a whole bunch of the players aren't. Do it, going to the right spots to generate offense in, the, and like that's one of the re- main reasons why the Flames have scored so few goals. Uh, we're one of the lowest scoring teams in the entire NHL. We haven't got our act together in 56 games. Even if they all figure it out now, we got 26 left. I mean, do you really think that say 26 games they figure it out, everything gets remedied? Yeah, if they get their head out of their posterior, yeah, they could you know it, so how far do you think realistically they go or could it, go if they play well they could easily make it to the conference finals just because our division is trash and like and that's you look at all of the teams in our division they're all bad and calgary is the only talented club it's just the effort level's been the problem everybody else like vancouver Frankly, but even last year, we saw a club that had good effort go into the playoffs, look like they didn't belong there. Well, Calgary last season at the end of the year, that was when the effort level started dropping off after the All-Star break, and they were winning games just based on out-talenting the other team. And the effort level, like we were complaining like at times that down the stretch last year that they, they're, you know, Monaghan, Gaudreau, and Lindholm have to step it up because, like, you know, you want to go into the playoffs, you know, all cylinders going, and, you know, we weren't really seeing that, and Colorado had to fight for their lives just to get into the dance, and they were all pushing in the same direction where Calgary, whose effort level wasn't there, and Calgary just got caught with their pants down, and... Like, if Calgary can enter the postseason, you know, with something to play for and are actually playing together as a team, talent-wise, there's not a team in the West that is better than the Flames when they're playing their way. It's just, can they do it? And I don't know. Like, I really don't know. I think second round is possible, but a long shot. I I think these guys are one and done. Yeah. Probably, and it would depend on their matchup. And, like, frankly, if the team that I'm actually the scaredest of of those teams would be Edmonton, just because, you know, McDavid and Dreisaitl, it, you know, they can take over a series just by themselves. Everybody else, but though, by, by your logic, if we're kind of underachieving, those guys have to go back to the mean and eventually crap out at some point too, right? Yeah. Well, I also don't expect the Edmonton Oilers to make the playoffs either, so you know that's neither here nor there. I, I think that the if it you know if I was my expectations for the playoffs is Calgary, Vancouver, Vegas are one, two, three in some order in our division and uh chicago and winnipeg are the wild card teams so okay yeah well in order to get to the playoffs we're gonna need to make sure that our guys stay healthy and uh the flames have some issues right now the captain as we talked about went out earlier this week um Travis Hamanick went out in the Vancouver game. He's now been placed on the IR with a shoulder injury. Sam Bennett is out tonight. Questionable for uh, tonight's game. He has, they're saying the flu. Matt, we're, I mean, we're short two defensemen right now and two, I think, big parts of this blue line. 
with the captain out and Hamannick out, our defense isn't looking great. We've got Hannafin Anderson, Brody Stone, Shillington Davidson, Yellison's been called up. Um, do you think this is going to force the Flames' hand to maybe overspend on a defenseman at the deadline? Honestly, I don't want to see the Flames really add in any way, shape, or form at this point, at least until this time next week. Because w- by then we'll have a better idea of what this team is made of because the next five games are all against deadbeats. So if they don't basically win four or five of these games, then we'll have a good idea of, you know, like where this team is. Like if the Flames lose three of these games, then, you know, you're talking we should sell really hard at the deadline. Would you still sell if uh, the captain and and Hamannick are out? No. No. Um, it if the Flames are winning these games, it will be because of the fact that the defensemen have stepped up their game. And you you look at uh, Anderson and Hannafin. I thought they pl- uh, partnered very well together, and I've been kind of hoping at some point that those two would get placed together um, to see if they can get some chemistry going just for the long term because I think that might end up becoming the Flames first pairing in the next couple of seasons and you know that would be excellent if they can get a bond together now and if they can play really good together then that you know you have to take opportunities when injuries arise and see if your guys can step up and all of your young players and Shillington needs to show that he can take that next step. And he's looked rather good lately. He's been up and down lately. uh, I've been seeing more positive with him. There's still negatives. Like, Shillington's a very risky player, and he's doing a lot of the little things correctly. He just, when he screws up, it's usually very noticeable. (laughs) And it's like, oh, that was really dumb. Uh, what were you doing? And yet that doesn't count like the other 15 plays that he made that were actually pretty good. And, you know, he's still learning, but he's been more noticeable and taking more chances lately and being on the successful end of those chances. And I think he's starting to emerge with some comfort level at the NHL level. And so him playing more of a role as well, I think, will help him. Brody and Stone, they're professionals. You know what you're going to get from them. And I think that was one of the benefits of bringing Stone back as well. I don't want him to be our second pairing guy all year. He's one of those guys that you can probably put onto a second pairing and he's not going to look lost. And I have to give Brody credit there too. Brody's looked a lot better this year. I mean, we've crapped on him a lot in the past, but... He's he's looked like he's you know a good top four defenseman this year. Yeah. I mean, how many times last year did we say something went wrong and it was Brody's fault? Yeah. Well, ever since he, he collapsed in December, Brody has been as good as he has ever been in his NHL career. And you know, I'm hoping that you know, like honestly, if he continued to play like this. I would be more than happy to have him back for another three, four seasons. It's just, you know. You don't have any evidence it's going to continue, though. I know. That's <laughs> the problem. But um, if you want one of them, I think you're honestly better to re-sign Hamannick because you know what you're getting. Yeah. It, it's tough. Uh, frankly, I think the Flames have to lose one of them just because of all the young defensemen that they have. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, it's always just... frustrating because, you know, you, you like the aspects that Hamannick brings and you like the aspects that Brody brings. I'm just worried that we're going to keep Brody around because of the injuries and they might both walk for nothing at July 1, and that kind of worries me as well. Yeah, well, I know that would be, like, worst-case scenario, but, you know, like, that's why, like... Frankly, like, we'll know more next week. Just because, like, if the Flames lose three or four of these next few games, 
Like, you know, you can't even beat the deadbeats, so why, you know, st start really selling Brody and, you know, like anything that's not stapled down at that point, and, you know, who cares? Because, like, this team can't obviously take those next steps, so, you know, if you can't beat these guys, really... <laughs> if yeah. these guys think they're a playoff roster, I think one thing they're going to have to do is go out, especially if Hamannick and Gio are out long term, is shore up their blue line. I don't think they need to make a big deal, but even if you look last year, Oscar Fantenberg for a fourth round pick, I think they'll need to bring in a good enough defenseman for you know a mid level pick or something because I don't think that Davidson is the long term solution there. If yeah. we think we're a playoff team, now I have a question for you. Sure. Would you sign? Dion Phaneuf for the rest of the season? No. How about David Schlemko? No. I think anyone that's been out this long, I would question their conditioning if it's worth it. Uh. I think as much as I don't think it's the right bet, because um, I think he needs to go to the AHL, I would be more comfortable putting Valimaki in than one of those guys. Yeah. I know. Like, frankly, to me... Like, it would depend on the severity of the injuries. Like, if both uh, Giordano and Hamannick are out for basically the rest of the regular season, then I think the Flames should go and get a depth guy. But, like, if they're going to be back, say, mid-March or earlier, then I think you just ride with what you got. And if they're both out for the season, even if they're both out till, say, mid-March... Do you sort of wave the white flag and surrender the season? It would depend really on this next week. Because this week, because all five of the games are against the worst teams in the West. Like, so if it, this team's going to come together, it should be on this road trip. Yeah, because you play San Jose, who's second worst in the West. You play LA, who's worst in the West. You play two against... Anaheim, who's third worst in the West, and a game against Chicago, who's the fourth worst team in the West. If you can't win at least four of those games, there's no hope for you. Just blow it up. So after the Tuesday game, uh, or the 17th 2 p.m. game, I mean, against Anaheim on Family Day, that's when you make your decision? Yeah, because by then, frankly, like if you haven't basically murdered these teams, it, you know, because like, this is where, like after that Vancouver game, Okay, you've proved that you can kick Vancouver's butt. Now, you've got a bunch of really bad sad sack organizations that are in the midst of a rebuild and trying to sell everything off that's not stapled down. If you can't walk over them, what makes you think that you can beat Boston twice the week after or Tampa Bay? March is going to be tough. You know, like, they play Tampa Bay twice in the coming weeks. They play the Islanders twice in the coming weeks. Like, those are pretty good teams. And, like, yeah, there's a lot of mediocre teams as well. But, like, if you can't beat the deadbeats that are coming up, there's no confidence that you can actually beat any of the good teams to go on that run. Because, like, right now, like, every point matters. And that, and there's a lot of, as they say, four-point games coming up, too. Yeah. And if you can't put a little bit of space between you and everybody below you right now like especially like these five games like come on that's 10 gimme points really and if you can't get eight or nine of them to you know push yourself up towards first in the division you know like there's not really any confidence that anything's going to change between now and the end of the season and like it to me it'd be like yeah just there's no confidence that these guys can actually step up and do anything get rid of them and the first two weeks of March, we play Arizona, Vegas, Winnipeg. Those are games that, you know, we got so many games. We got another one later in the month against Vancouver, another Winnipeg. Those are games that you have to win, and you have to win in regulation because you can't afford to even give the other team loser points. No, and that's uh, there's a lot of games, like even in April, uh, they play uh, Vegas and Edmonton as well. And, like, those are all vital games and like yeah there are some games against eastern teams like florida and the islanders and the nevils and the rangers and tampa and boston but still if you can't beat teams that are like clearly in we're trying to get lafreniere zone 
you know, like, there's no confidence that they'd actually be able to beat anybody who knows what they're doing on the ice. <laughs> you know, because, so like, so they're all glorified so, AHL teams that So are this is up. your sort of roundabout way of kind of saying this, this week is the week that the Flames have to decide if they're sellers or buyers. And if the yeah. defensive core can look serviceable enough without two of their key pieces, maybe they've got a chance. But if, if it's not here, it's not going to get any better. No. And, like, you're in pack it in mode frankly like if you can't beat the, these five teams or win at least four of them like yeah you just have to bite the bullet say this team doesn't have it this year and try to extract as much value out of this organization as you can and retool at the draft and hope that next season the team actually gets the motivation to show up and play hockey with all of these injuries, the Flames have made some roster moves this week. They recalled Brandon Davidson. They recalled Alexander Yellison, who I know you want to play, but I don't think is going to play. And Buddy Robinson is doing the hokey pokey. Put Buddy in, take Buddy out, put Buddy in. I guess now we got to shake them all about. Um, they demoted him and then recalled him in the same day. What, what a what a weird day for Buddy, because I'm pretty sure he has to actually report. Now, as you said before the show, at least they're in San Jose, but pretty much go home. Get some fresh underwear and join us again. Yeah, uh, that's always a fun day for that player. Hey, I'm leaving now. Oh, that's hey, right. I'm back. <laughs> put like, Buddy um, in, take Buddy out, put Buddy in, shake him all about. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You know, and I think Buddy Robinson looked good for the first couple games. I don't think at this point he's anything special as a call-up. I think he's here because he's Johnny's friend and it, you know, whether it's providing Johnny motivation or not, he's also one of the older guys. We know we've gotten Quine. I think it's time to see what we've gotten Robinson. I'm hearing a lot of people saying, you know, they think we should make room for Buddy Robinson this year. I don't think he's done that well. No. And he, how would you say he's a big guy who can skate and he's not going to embarrass himself really at the NHL level. Like he's serviceable. If he's your 12th, 13th guy, he goes out and gets a few hits and four checks for you. Awesome. That's all you can expect from him. Like, if you're expecting him to, like, be Gaudreau's line mate, like, yeah, that's not going to work. And, I think he could take Tobias Reader's job next year. Yeah, and I think that's part of the reason why yeah, he's getting an extended look is do we re-sign him? Because he's played rather well for Stockton, and, you know, he, we're wanting to know if he can earn another contract and be a, that leader for Stockton again, and or if the Flames move, whatever. You know what I mean. Uh, but um, The Flames yeah. are in in Stockton for at least another year. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was this year or the next that they were out. But anyhow, um, yeah, and... It, Everybody else, like, you know what Zarnik brings. And at this point, like, we have Dubé and Manjapane and Goudreau who are all on the very small side. You know, Zarnik's not very big either, so bringing him up's not going to help you in the size department. And, you know, Matthew Phillips, who would probably get recalled at some point, is injured, so it's not like... We can throw him in the lineup. He's out for a bit. And, you know, like, it, there's not really any other options. Like, if Jankowski went down, you'd see Godin up in two seconds. But I don't know if you would. I, I think I think they might just put keep Buddy Robinson there. Yeah. Well. We've and, talked about it before, too. As fans, we like to see the, the hot young kid come up, be it Phillips or Godin. There's something to be said about leaving them in the AHL for that consistency. Yeah, and yeah, the first round guys typically are ready to, or like Dubé, he can kind of step in. That's who I think right they'd away. call up if they want to make a call up. Yeah, but. Well, I guess Dubé's here. Yeah, he had three points in, against Vancouver. But, yeah. um, you know, like those guys can step in with very little AHL seasoning. Usually, yeah. your third, fourth, fifth, and beyond round picks, they need a while in the A. Like a guy like Goudreau's an exception. And 
you know. W- but even without needing a, a while in the A, I mean, just bringing them up, moving a guy from, say, playing 15 minutes a night to, you know, eight minutes a night, it really, it's it's a different game. And being a, a bottom six forward is a different game than being a top six forward. Like, I think you almost have to replace bottom six with bottom six, top six with top six. If we lose a top six guy, sure, bring up a, an AHL top six guy, put him on the second line. But I, I think moving a guy who's used to playing – you know, 18 minutes a night to six, it's a very different transition. Yeah. Uh, the only time that you really see that happen is like in the last couple of games of the season where it doesn't matter. And, you know, you're and just... that's why I think they like guys like Ronaldo and, you know, if he wasn't hurt Lombard, cause those guys are used to playing lower, lower minutes. Yeah. And plus we need to see what, where a whole bunch of these guys are at for next season. So when I said Dubé, I had I had Ronaldo in my head. I don't know if he's still here or not, but that's the guy who I think I don't know if he's here. Or he's in Stockton, but that's the guy I was thinking of, and I think you just slot him in. Yeah, we got enough guys that can sort of play center, including Robinson. Yeah, uh, Calgary's has enough everything but right-handed shooters up front. <laughs> Maybe that's what we got to do in the summers: retrain some guys shoot right-handed. Yeah. You don't get to go golfing. You got to show us you can shoot right-handed first. 100 pucks on the net. Let's go. Yeah. And, you know, if you have young children, teach them to shoot right-handed. <laughs> I'm still they, waiting they will... for the, the first NHL player who you see, like, switching sticks because he can shoot left or right-handed. You need to get uh, Gordy Howe out there, you know. He used to do that. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, in the modern NHL, we've never we've never no. seen that. No, and that even he was weird back then, and yeah. Um, well, Matt, we got a, an interesting email this week. I won't read it all because there's a lot of stuff that doesn't pertain to the Flames in this, but from a gentleman who's going by Harry Singer. Um, I think Henry Singer is the, the menswear. Oh, he signed it Harry Singer and Henry Singer, so I'm not sure if he's Harry or Henry or somebody Singer. Menswear clothes, sewing machine, I don't know. Um, but his point that he makes here is just did some math. The Flames have 26 games left in the season. They have 63 points in the standing, and according to recent history, they need 95 points to be assured a playoff berth, give or take. That means between now and April 4th, they will have to win 20 of those 26 games or more, or more than two out of every three. Now a playoff berth could be attained with less than 95 points, but that would be risky. So it's truly go time. The man's got a point. You know, it's it, like you said, it's going to be tough. We won't well, circle to that get nine, again. But. Yeah, well, to get 96 points, the Flames need to go 17 and 9. And, and I don't think and, that 95 is the metric this year, just how no, close everybody I think, is. Yeah, I think you're talking more like 88 frankly i was gonna say about 84 83 somewhere in there yeah, yeah i could see like the last team getting around that but yeah no the, this year seems to be a little weird but um y- you know and like that's where like if the flames do get 96 points at uh heading into the playoffs going 17 and 9 the rest of the way like that's what like i was referring to like where this team is taking off and like you know might actually be a serious threat and you know that that's you know where like if they're less than that and the 88 per you know like i think that's a five game and done <laughs> type series but yeah it, well, well this road trip will tell yeah it, it's really you know it's bad when you're 56 games into the season and you don't know whether this team is actually a favorite to win the division or, you know, ready for laughing here. <laughs> like, it, this is such a weird season. Like, Well, and as we've talked about, and we won't circle it all again with everyone that's in the playoff race, but it's not just us, right? I mean, no. we tend to look at things in a microcosm of the Flames are looking inconsistent. There's a lot of teams that are looking inconsistent right now, and I think the whole cap situation and not going up as much as everyone thought really did cause an issue for these guys and for a lot of uh, teams and i think yeah. that's probably what's got a lot of teams in this funky place right now 
Well, like right now, only the California teams, New Jersey, Ottawa, and Detroit are like clearly done. And like more so, like, you know, you might see one sneak in, but like if San Jose were to go on a run or something like Somebody that. Somebody sneak but, in, one of the current teams have to look really bad. Yeah. But, you know, it, frankly, like, other than those six teams, like, everybody else other than the top five teams is in that same boat of mediocrity. And it's kind of weird where, like, the middle 20 teams are all just kind of crap. <laughs> like, there's nobody really separating themselves at all from anybody else. And it's such a bizarre season where... You know, like, you look at the Eastern Conference, like, uh, Toronto, who's third in their division, and the two wildcard teams, and even Carolina, who's out of a playoff spot, would all be first in our division. You know, like, that's how bizarre everything is. Like, this season is just weird. <laughs> well, I think, as you mentioned, this whole season... I don't even... Yeah, I guess it's fair to say this whole season. This whole season really probably hinges on this road trip, and I think this road trip tells us if we're in or we're out, and I wouldn't even say this road trip, but this week. So why don't we look ahead to this week and make some predictions, shall we, Matt? Sure. Got five games, one tonight. The Calgary Flames are in San Jose to take on the the Sharks. Uh, then on they have a back-to-back on Wednesday. They're at L.A., an 8 p.m. start time. Thursday, they're at Anaheim, another 8 p.m. start time. Then they come home for a game on Saturday versus Chicago, an 8 p.m. start time. What a coincidence. (laughs) And then we break the cycle on Monday, Family Day. It's Family Day at the Saddle Dome, 2 p.m. start time. Your kid can get involved in the game somehow. I saw an ad they're looking for a junior organist and a little Beasley. So if you've got kids that aspire to play the organ at an arena, go look on the Flames website. Last week, neither of us got things right. You pr- you thought we'd win Nashville, lose the other two, so you got the right number of games, but the wrong games. Yeah. I got my prediction locked into this one. I think we beat L.A., and I think we beat Anaheim at home on, on the 2 p.m., and I think we lose the rest. <laughs> uh, what are you thinking? Well. You've been talking the, the whole show about how the Flames are going to turn this around. You know, the optimistic side of me says they're going to sweep the week. Five is this the optimistic side or the Homer Flames fan? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. But the realist in me says that they lose four of the five and they only win the game against Anaheim next week. At home? Yeah. And by then, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, I think that they're not going to show up frankly for any of the games but we'll see um you know the optimistic side like if they show up they'll win four or five if they don't then yeah it's gonna be uh who are we selling in for what that'll be basically the context of our next show um (laughs) yeah well i mean you've you've been talking about michael backland being on the block and he's got no trade so he's probably not going anywhere so we'll find other guys to sell yeah um, it'll, but be, yeah, it'll, think, it'll be an interesting week. If they show up, I'll go with the win four of the five. And which one do they lose? I'll go with the Honda Center just because it's the Honda Center and we always lose there. But, um, you know, if they actually don't show up and play more like the San Jose and Nashville games from earlier this week, then, yeah, it's going to be let's pack it up. I just don't see any signs that this team has got what it takes to be more consistent from here on out. I mean, yeah, the you know the uh, Vancouver game was good, but before that we had three lousy games. You know, even before that we're winning a couple, losing a couple. Like, you know, yes, things could change, but, you know, Calgary could also have palm trees grow tomorrow. Like, it's, it's just the likelihood is not high, and these guys haven't seen – I don't think they've shown us enough to think that – things are going to change in the next couple seven game sets yeah i know it's it's a weird season and, and i and i think it, this is a year know, where it, you have to play yourself in you can't you know you can't rely on other people 
Yeah, it, this is going to be a fun and interesting week of Flames hockey, that's for sure. Like, I, you know, we as, you know, quasi-experts can speculate all we want, but they'll show themselves what they are this week. No matter what happens, Matt, when you and I talk on family day, we're going to have a lot to talk about. Yeah, it'll be a very interesting show. And we'll either be surveying the market of which guys should the Flames go and trade for? Ilya Kolchak. Um, or who should we sell? Everybody else. <laughs> you Just know, bring so. in Kovalchuk and sell everybody else. Yes. Well, we'll see. You know, that wouldn't actually be a bad option if the Flames were wanting to get a decent buy low cat, you know, because he is a free agent at the end of the year. and Your top he's line, Kovalchuk, Buddy Robinson, and Quine. Yay, Stanley Cup, here we come. Your next line. Well, we'll put him on forward because we need to. Dion Phaneuf and <laughs> David Schlemko. Get Shillington up there. I've been campaigning for defensemen as forwards for all this time. Make it happen. <laughs> Just put them all on forwards. Put the forwards on defense, the defense on forwards. What a yeah, wacky mix- game it'll be on the 25th. Yeah, mix it up. Have three defensemen, two forwards. Just confuse everybody. <laughs> Could you imagine if they actually put like three guys back and two guys up? The other that, team would the have new no market idea. inefficiency. You know, like everybody's going, uh, "What are you guys doing?" <laughs> that game in Boston, the day after the deadline, they just look at this team and go, "Yeah, we don't know how to play against this. Just dump it in. Hope we can get it." Yeah. <laughs> and the game is going to a shootout, zero zero. <laughs> we don't know who to shoot because we're not sure who the forwards are. Yeah. Oh. All right, Matt, yeah, we'll this do, will be a weird one, anyway. Do, do you want to sign us off for this week? As always, go Flames, go kick some butt, and hopefully, you know, we're talking optimistic this time next week. This is the week when we've got to go big or go home. Yep. And we I want Kovalchuk. Maybe. I don't want Kovalchuk, but we'll talk about that next week. Go Flames, go. Fireside Chat is hosted by Dan Stevenson, co-hosted by Matt DeBorg. This episode produced and edited by Peter Marino. Fireside Chat is licensed under Creative Commons license. For full license details, visit firesidechat.ca.